Now, Mother has described this thing in 1955. What we had read just now in Savitri. So description belongs to the period 1947, eight years prior to what mother has described. Obviously, mother is not describing on the basis of reading the description from Savitri, as we are doing. <laughs> She has experienced that thing. That also does not mean that although she has spoken about it in 1955, that does not mean that she got that experience in 1955. She had described in 1955, it is something which had happened much, 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 much earlier. Maybe during the time when she was writing prayers and meditations. at least 40 years before that, you see, 40, 50 years before that, prayers and meditations. She was writing at that time, those experiences, you see, the psychic experiences. But you can see the parallelism between the two descriptions, what mother has said from door to door and what we have got here in Savitri, and as she passed from room to through room and room to door and rock on door. Exactly the same phrase, so to say, see, in both the places. So this is a living experience. It's a description of it. It is not something which is imagined and given. You are really experiencing, and therefore you are describing it. And therefore this kind of an identity, even in the phrases, the whole thing, you see. Of course, when Shivendu was writing in the earlier part, his Savitri drafts in the 1930s. He used to read out those passages to the mother. Whatever he has written in the night, so whatever he has written in those days, he used to read out to the mother. And the mother said that this is exactly what I had experienced in the previous night. He is expressing my experiences. He is revealing my experiences. He is exposing me, <laughs> he says, you see. Now, in other words, although Shevendu had written this thing in 1947, although mother has spoken about it in 1955, they already knew the whole thing throughout, all along. And thus she passed in that mysterious place, to room and room, to door and rock and door. She felt herself made one, with all she saw and sealed identity, etc. This is very beautiful, very powerful description. You have one of the most powerful passages in Savitri, and this is one. Now, Shivendu is speaking here about Brahma, about Shiva about Krishna and Radha, he has specifically named them. He has indirectly said word, he has described word fusions indirectly. Lakshmi, Vishnu, all these gods and goddesses. Now, does this mean that Shivendu is describing the gods and goddesses of the Hindu religion. That is what people will jump up to say. He is talking of Hindu religion, which is all <laughs> defunct, useless, that kind of a thing you see. There are certainly Hindu gods and goddesses. He is not talking about Athena or Zeus or Apollo or Aphrodite. He is talking of all Hindu gods and goddesses. So is Savitri a Hindu scripture? <laughs> and this is a passage which those Pandits will quote to justify this stand. 
that this is a Hindu scripture. But obviously, from the very language, from the very mode of presentation, it is not describing a particular traditional experience. It is a spiritual experience which is being described. The spiritual, which is timeless, which is universal, which is applicable anywhere for them who are open to it. Psychic being, well, you see these powers and powers and powers, and you describe them, you give them name. It does not become Hindu. It becomes, it is always, always, always a spiritual experience. If you don't see them, that's your fault, but it is so. It is, it is an inner experience, which is universal. Anybody can approach and see if it is true or not. It's not a question of belief or being a bigot. That Sri Bindu is describing a Hindu mythology here. And he is presenting the ancient scripture here. It's not that at all. It is a spiritual experience altogether. And it's what we are saying in the case of the mother's experience also. It is universal. Those who are open to spiritual experiences, they will understand and follow it. It is not for the mental or for the traditional, for the religious mind at all. Savitri is not for them. It is not for them. It is universal. So you don't say it is European, it is English, it is Indian, it is Chinese. It's not that. Those who are open, they will see that kind of thing you see. Always. In the last chamber on a golden seat, one sat whose shape no vision can define. And then of course he says, finally, a house was there that all made of flame and light and crossing a wall of doorless living fire. She was asked to go like this, winding, winding, winding stretches. There suddenly she met her secret soul. Now this is one of the most beautiful descriptions we have of their coming together. A being stood immortal in transience. Who is this being? Her secret soul. Our secret story. You see, in your previous canto, the triple world forces, we have seen three powers. The first one was, of course, the Madonna of grief, of suffering, of pity. Well, let me put it this way. First, you have got, yeah, 122.39. Savitri heard a voice, the first Madonna, heard a voice and echo heard the counterpart. And then, and turning to her being of pity. She's turning to her being of pity. And then again, 123.55, second Madonna, and turning to her being of power, she spoke. Savitri is turning to her being of pity, Savitri is turning to her being of power, and in the third case, Savitri is turning to her being of light. While she is answering to them, she is turning to her being of pity, being of power, being of light. To her being, it is that being here. A being stood immortal. She met her first 
as being of pity, then being of power, then being of light. Savitri turned to her being of pity, which also corresponds to the Madonna of suffering. And then mother of grief divine. So you got three things. Her being of pity, Madonna of suffering, and mother of grief divine. Three things are there. Then secondly, same thing. Savitri turned to her being of power, that is mother of might. Sorry, Madonna of might. And mother of work and force. And lastly, and Savitri turned to her being of light, Madonna of light, mother of joy and peace. So we have got three things now, being of pity and Madonna of suffering, being of power and Madonna of might, being of light and Madonna of light. And the counterparts of them are mother of grief divine, mother of work and force, mother of joy and peace. So there are three things now simultaneously, being of her being and mother aspect, the being aspect and the Mother aspect of it, both others simultaneously. Mother of grief divine, mother of work and force, mother of joy and peace. And in, in, in that context, if you see now here, a being stood immortal in transience. The three parts of this being, of this being, are the being of pity, the being of power, the being of light, of that being. And corresponding to them are the mother aspect of it. So this being is already connected with what we have seen in the aspects of Savitri's force, soul forces. A being stood immortal in transience. Now there is a little difference between Madonna and the mother. As I said last time, the Madonna aspect is closer to the individual. The mother aspect is the counterpart or the transcendent. It is not that uh, mother of might and, and sorry, Madonna of might and mother of work and force is not the same thing. They are different altogether. One is more intimately connected with the individual soul and the other corresponding to its counterpart in the transcendent, the mother aspect. If she is the mother, from where these things flow, issue out. In a way, you can say as if the Madonna is the daughter of that mother. So this being, when you see here now, immortal, she is the Supreme Shakti herself, the Divine as the Consciousness Force, that is what this being as an individual in the transcendent. This being is not Savitri's psychic being. That is very important. This being is not Savitri's psychic being. It is the transcendental aspect of the Divine Shakti operating in a certain context. See, I mean, it is this being, therefore, which is the secret soul of Savitri. She, Savitri, the aspiring soul, is meeting the transcendental soul. 
a being stood immortal in transient deathless dallying with momentary things in whose wide eyes of tranquil happiness which pity and sorrow could not abrogate infinity turns his gaze on finite shapes observer of the siren steps of the hours and the passing scenes of the everlasting plain in the mystery of his selecting will in the divine comedy a participant the spirit's conscious representative god's delegate in our humanity comrade of the universe the transcendence ray she had come into the mortal body's room to play at ball with time and circumstances she that being that being is feminine we will see something saw the details more carefully <laughs> 